So hello, okay. everybody. I am here with Tim Doherty, and we're here to talk to you about streaming at scale. Tim, thanks for joining me. You bet, Justin. Excited have, to be here. I'm glad you are, and I have to say, I, I think we've picked some good backgrounds here. Everyone, we're still in a pandemic. We still have to do these things on Zoom, and so I am sorry uh, if I don't have a green screen behind me this time, and the pieces of my ear are slowly disappearing depending on how I turn. But uh, you know, that's that's our life. It'll today, get better. Right? It'll, it'll get better as everything gets better. I am actually standing in front of what was a real display at a trade show. I think this is IBC in Amsterdam about coming up on two years ago. So at least it's a picture of something real, yeah. even though it's not real. Yeah. Although I love the um, ominous Bowser logo you, in you, that very like, avant-garde yeah, that, office. In the yeah. fake building. I, is I, it fake? Oh yeah, those oh, are those you're are totally, like in the future. Those that are looks drawn like this... buildings. No, I feel like I am in um an underground bunker from uh, Resident <laughs> Evil. You know, oh, wow. where everyone has okay. to work underground locked up while they work on the virus to turn everybody into zombies. That's that's where I am, <laughs> man. Um, it's it's a sad place I live in. But hey, so let's talk about uh, live streaming, because that's what we're here for. Sure. Now, uh, specifically what I'd like to talk about first is why it's important to uh to to work to have a option to stream at scale and i guess what i mean by this is normally speaking when people buy our product uh wow streaming engine um it's it's a system that uh, they might house either on premises or in the cloud but at the end of the day uh the bottleneck is its bandwidth and the reason that that's more important with something like live video streaming versus, let's say, uh, a, a five megabyte file, a PDF file that somebody wants to download, is that uh, in there can be situations where you're live streaming something that may go on for a couple hours and you're getting 200,000 viewers all over the world. And in a situation like that, there's no way one server is going to be able to handle all that bandwidth. Is that true? No, 100% true. Yeah, and it's interesting how there's a mentality around streaming, even to a small scale. It's generally produced in a way that assumes a very large audience. So it's very easy for content to be uh, viral, if you will. Um, so, you know, you have to think about it in terms of who my audience is and how big it is. If you are just doing a traffic camera, in a relatively small community and you have a good idea that there's only going to be no more than 50 people watching it at any given time concurrently you can get away with a single instance of say wow the streaming engine running in a private data center not even in a cloud because that's manageable but when you deal with unmanageable situations like um and we'll probably cover it you know other other types of events soccer games um you know very large scale concerts perhaps political events um, you know, things that can really require... Even, yeah, like even corporate training, for example. Oh, yeah, and, and, and corporate streaming has been a tremendous scaling opportunity um, for cloud services, given that we are in a pandemic, as we mentioned earlier, there is a significant requirement on networks to be able to reach large private audiences that are scattered all over the globe. So it's definitely a very critical topic for anybody who's considering building their own streaming um, you know this streaming build out yeah let's let's um let's talk about some scenarios and what somebody can do uh, as i was saying before in, in this example of a five megabyte file uh if somebody was trying to let's say we sent out an announcement um oh we have an update right so that update is 150 megabytes uh and we send it out to 20,000 users even if uh let's say uh 15 or 20 we're downloading it at the same time that day, that's still manageable. Uh, but it, you know what we're talking about for live streaming could be, let's say, 30,000 people at once. So, so here's my example with 30,000 people at once, where that's, that's not manageable. Uh, let's say we're dealing with a corporation that has 32 satellite offices, and it's doing a uh, company-wide announcement that's a live stream. Uh, now, sure we could be talking about 32 offices but those people could be viewing it in multiple conference rooms 
or at home on their computer uh, and they have let's say over a hundred thousand people worldwide that are watching this at the end of the day. So that's not necessarily 100,000 screens, but let's say that's even 30,000 screens. So that goes back to our 30,000 mm -hmm. example. Um, what's the solution that we have to scale that way? And we're talking about it right now in a mm -hmm. private situation where, mm -hmm. where we don't want this necessarily uh, available to anybody uh, outside of a private network. So the people at home, let's say, could be using a VPN. And I think that's that's often the case. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, w what comes to mind as you're describing that is the challenge of a corporate streaming workflow where you have multiple locations, but typically globally situated. And inside each one of those locations, you have hundreds of people watching the stream. At the same time, you have people all over the globe that are working from remote locations, probably their home office, where they're in, in a typical scenario, network wise, they're signed into a VPN and they have access to network resources at the home office or on the home data center. So that's good for security because they're exchanging files, information isn't necessarily being exposed to the internet because it's encrypted by a VPN. The inversion of that is when you have to access a local streaming server. So we're talking again about media servers that are in the brick and mortar building. You have to access that by VPN. And if you have thousands of people trying to access through an internet connection, because that's what supports the VPN, you're probably going to deal with a high utilization or maybe even an overwhelming network situation for your internet connection. Right, because so that one building is just not going to have enough bandwidth to handle all those people trying to connect yeah, to it. In some cases, they do. Uh, you know, some corporations have such a profile that they're invested into, you know, like the Denver International Airport. I believe they have two 10 gigabyte pipes going into that facility to support oh, wow. their free Wi-Fi. And one is primary and one is secondary. And so that's an incredible amount of bandwidth, 10 gigabytes essentially 20. So, you know, and in, in, in the, generally speaking, the Wi-Fi is really good there, but they've invested in that, right. in that internet infrastructure. Right. And our and office uses Comcast. So <laughs> it's a standard, I think, business Comcast option, right? But we're, sure. we're, we're probably way more limited in terms of how many people can connect in to use our VPN. Yeah, particularly on the upload. Uh, Comcast Business DSL, typically today, it's 2021, is about 120 megs down and about 20, 25 up. And so that upload is your constraint. So let's get back to our conversation. You have a bunch of people in conference rooms or at their desk. They're all watching the local media server. So they're just hitting the switch gear. They're not going out to the internet. And they're, they're having a great experience because it's, it's, it's a local, super stable connection, streaming connection. But these people that are off-prem, what we've done um, within the range of 2020, when a lot of companies were coming to us, a lot of our customers who have significant investment in media servers on-prem. So they're, again, running in their brick and mortar building. They're like, help. We've got all these people off in their homes and in, in, in remote locations, and it's starting to really hurt our internet connection. Our CEO is angry because he can't talk to everybody at once. We've actually um, partnered with, with some companies and, and helped engineer what's called a split tunnel VPN. And granted, the, the network expertise is to set this up is typically on the vendor of the VPN. But basically what a split tunnel does is I'm on my VPN at home and I want to watch this all hands meeting. So it's smart enough to say, if I am presented with a domain that goes to say, wow, a CDN, there's it's CDN3.waza.com, I believe, or something like that. The, the VPN goes, oh, oh, CDN3.waza.com. I'm not gonna go down the VPN to hit that media server. I'm going to just jump on out to the internet and use the local, you know, whoever AT&T, CenturyLink, Comcast connection, their normal internet connection at their house and i'm going to connect to the wowza cdn and by the way we have security on there like token authentication and things to maintain you know the integrity of authentication and they can they can literally scale on a cdn so that's a that's a that's a challenging thing to set up it's something that we typically would deploy professional services to to deploy and test but it is possible to scale you know, using your existing on-prem infrastructure. So you take care of all your local people. If there are people in the offices, 
you know, especially during a pandemic, it's hit and miss. But we can we can definitely scale using a content delivery network. And I don't know if we got into what a CDN does or if we need to. And and forgive me going short story long on this, but um, that's generally how you approach it. No, no, no. Uh, um... I mean, if you want to talk about CDNs, I think most people understand these days uh, that in order to deliver content, um, having a network out there that's already designed to deliver mm -hmm. that content, to cache that content locally uh, so people can access it faster, um, a CDN is great for that. Oh, and a CDN certainly, is fantastic. Yeah. yeah and, I, and, I, I'm, go ahead. Oh, I was about to say, well, we have our own Wowza CDN, which is uh, using, I think at this point, um, Fastly. Is that correct? That's correct. Wowza uses both Fastly, and that's our primary CDN, but we also have had a relationship with Akamai for, for several years. And, you know, the CDN is, they've been in place for a long time. Right. And we don't have to just talk about it in terms of uh, this example. I mean, certainly you could be using that CDN for something more openly distributed, like, uh, let's totally. say, streaming a soccer game. Uh, if, if that's being watched through, let's say, by a broadcast company. And they're streaming it not just to their website as a live stream, but also to their app, right? right. Um, so we're talking, again, maybe not just 30,000, hundreds of thousands of people across mm -hmm. the world watching it at the same time. Uh, the CDN is still a great solution for this. Well, yeah, there's, there's a CDN and then there's, there's the media server layer, which um, processes the stream. And that's why Wowza and a CDN are two complementing technologies. So I just want to stream a soccer game that I know I'm going to have 50,000 people watch. I have to use a CDN for that, unless I want to invest in all the infrastructure and strategy and auto scaling and all that to build my own, which is, which is kind of silly, unless you're a major broadcasting corporation. So I can send a video, which is, you know, it, it's, it's good to break down what you're actually sending. Because a CDN was designed to help websites scale. So you're not just serving a website from an ISP, you know, or some server on your desk running Apache. You're actually having a content delivery network that knows how to cache text, HTML, images, and then they added video. Well, it's not like a video stream is going through a CDN. They're chunks of data. So Wowza provides little, typically 10 second chunks that a CDN can grab using HTML and cache. So the CDN can actually hold you know, thousands of little tiny chunks of video, and then a playlist basically tells the player which chunks to play at which time. I'm really simplifying it, but it's important to recognize that a CDN is an HTTP accelerator. It, it caches content that it gets from somewhere else, and that somewhere else is a Wowza environment. Um, we're really working hard on our Wowza streaming cloud product, which is effectively that somewhere else that we manage we stand up we optimize we build things on and it does things like transcoding right you can you can connect an encoder to it and create adaptive bitrate it records um you can apply captions you can do manipulation of um you know audio tracks there's a lot of a lot of very important functions that wowza streaming engine and wowza streaming cloud transcoding provide that totally optimizes things for a CDN. So if I want to scale real simply, I can take my encoder, Wowza Clearcaster, uh, Teradek, um, Teradek Cube, Epifan, Pearl, whatever. I can take that, send it to Wowza Streaming Cloud. Wowza Streaming Cloud transcodes it. Let's just say it's just transcoding. So it takes 1080, makes a 720, 360, 160. It creates this adaptive bitrate ladder. And then the CDN just grabs it and serves it globally. It's that simple. So that's where I like to emphasize, you know, when you're scaling with Wowza, um, we've got the transcoding, we've got the ingest for it, but then the CDN automatically scales globally. And that's, I hate to use the word magic, but that's where the magic happens with regard to scaling. So I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, if we could just take a step back. One, one sure. part I'm confused there. We, we sort of mo moved over from talking about Wowza CDN which, which mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I'm, I'm excited about some of the things that are happening mm -hmm. with us right now, um, connecting with Fastly, since more analytics options are soon going to be possible with all of that. And that's the one nice thing about, you know, connecting with a, a specific company, being able to work together and, and do something. Oh, yeah. But um, you kind of moved over and talked about it in relation to Wowza Streaming Cloud. Now, now certainly you have options of connecting Wowza Streaming Engine uh, to Wowza CDN 
and then there's Wowza Streaming Cloud that already has a CDN built in with it. So are you talking about um, just using Wowza Streaming Cloud or are you talking about options where somebody might have an on-prem option with Wowza Streaming Engine and then be connecting it not to not to Wowza CDN but to Wowza Streaming Cloud? Well, let's draw a line. Um, there's two functions of Wowza Streaming Cloud. There's the transcoding, and then there's the actual content delivery network. The content delivery network is a special implementation of Fastly CDN and even uses Akamai to do all of that global scaling that we talked about. And yes, Fastly has some incredible, um, very fast metrics that you can grab. So there's some great API functions in Fastly. Um, so there's, there's the CDN part and the transcoding part. Now the transcoder, if you will, um, by default is, is, is available in Wowza Streaming Cloud. When you first log in, you see, you know, several, um, wizards, if you will, that help you connect your encoder. That's, that's setting up your, your, your transcoder, which is a managed service that cloud provides. Now this is the, this is the delineation. You can use that transcoder function which is managed with Wazza CDN, which is Fastly. So you've got the turnkey option, or you can not use the Wazza transcoder, not take advantage of our managed service capability and you're not having to worry about licensing and all that. And you can use Wazza streaming engine on-prem that is a origin to the CDN. So when we're getting back to that brick and mortar enterprise, big evil corporation, dot com um, streaming workflow, you can actually continue to use your on-prem server, your media server on-prem as an origin to Wowza CDN. So you don't have to duplicate your work. You're probably already transcoding in your own data center if you're a corporation. You've already got all that infrastructure set up. You've got Wirecast, you've got Clearcast, you've got encoders that are already set to an IP address and everything just works great. But what we're doing is bolting on the CDN as as an extension of your on-prem workflow. So your server or servers on-prem are still transcoding, they're still recording, they're still doing all that they've always done. But the, the CDN knows where it is because you set it up and users can access through the CDN as well. Okay. I hope that helps um, describe it a little bit better, but I am championing the Wowza Streaming Cloud product for obvious reasons. Um, but it does make it much, much easier if you don't want to get into server management, if you just want to be able to do what you do, produce a program and stream it out to the world. It's a great solution. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. One, one thing I would like to talk about, we have been talking about scaling in terms of a content delivery network for quite a bit here. And I absolutely agree. Like it, it, this is uh, in modern times, the easiest way to go is to use a uh, content delivery network that's out there and um, one that's already well integrated with systems that you're using makes the most sense to use because in the future and even now um, you're able to access uh, functionality that wouldn't normally be available if you just went and picked your own CDN out there. Um, but what I do want to ask about is other options for scaling. We talked about CDNs for scaling. Um, so uh, there are instances where corporations want to um, have everything in-house. Uh, maybe they have already um, either on-premises on their satellite locations. Uh, they want to create their own virtual private network to do scaling or perhaps they're creating their own like AWS instances in the cloud uh, for scaling. Um, how does that work with Wowza Streaming Engine? Fantastic question. And part of the driving reason behind that is strategy and security in many re respects. You know, the strategy is I want to keep everything under my control. I don't trust CDNs. I don't trust anybody. I am, my business is way too secure. So you, you may want to completely manage every aspect of, of your streaming operation. That's where building your own um, or scaling it on your own using our software is, is very advantageous. Uh, the other part of that is is um, when a lot of companies already have a very deep relationship with maybe Azure or Google or Amazon Web Services. So they have a lot of flexibility 
when it comes to deploying server resources in EC2, for example. So they would prefer to stand up servers in geographic locations and use a load balancer and build that themselves. So, you know, how does it work? Effectively, you use, and I think you and I did a, a video on this recently to describe how to do it, but you use the Wowza Origin Edge repeater, or you set up a push um, workflow where you're using SRT and some other um, protocols for, for video to go from server A to server B or from Origin to Edge. So basically what you do is you, you, you figure out how many people are going to be watching this content and from where, and you make an estimation so for example let's say i need a thousand people in boston i'd probably have three servers there as my primary and three servers as my backup and they'd be load balanced so anyone who hails from boston whether they're in a corporate facility or you have some way of recognizing their location you send them through the load balancer and wowza provides that load balancer free with our software to that group of servers and they're watching directly. So the, the workflow at a base level is the Wowza Origin Edge repeater. Um, you have an origin server that does the transcoding in most cases. So it's creating your adaptive bitrate ladder. It's got a lot of GPU or CPU resources. It's really busy. And the edge server just sits there in an idle state. So that server in Boston is just sitting there waiting for someone to connect as soon as a client connects. So somebody connects from Chrome or Firefox or their phone it wakes up that server and it immediately goes to the origin server and grabs the stream or streams that are being requested. And so you you can control bandwidth consumption between servers using an origin edge repeater. And there's some other advantages to using SRT, which is a um, kind of an error resilient protocol. And I don't know if we want to get too far into protocols, but basically, Justin, it's a matter of um, estimating, scaling your own resources globally, and you can right. get into auto scaling. And there's there are there, there are there's some expertise that we can provide with that. But fundamentally, you scale via network um, based on demand. Right. So so as you were saying, great for private networks. Great for people who want to uh, keep things. Let's say, well, government, for example, is probably yeah. a great example of that. Or security. Um, those are. But also, let's say. Um, healthcare, right? Yeah. I mean, with HIPAA, I'm sure they want to keep it as secure as possible, and they want to consider something like this as opposed to uh, even even I'm I'm assuming through uh, telehealth, uh, where uh, you are consulting or uh, doing consultations with mm -hmm. patients, right? You'd want to keep a secure uh, a secure yeah. way of streaming. It's 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 not necessarily scaling in the event large scale you're that right that's a one to one health. that's not a but good there example. is scaling no 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 it is a good example in the sense that you have to think about you know if you're doing a lot of one-to-one -one connections how many ones are there going to be are you going to have a thousand doctors all talking to a patient at the same time because that sounds a lot like two thousand connections so there's always a scaling element to it right um, but i think in the context of what we're talking about is that one too many or one to thousands um, and you're a hundred percent correct governments, um, high security, financial organizations, healthcare organizations, they really like to, um, own their own infrastructure. But at the same time, there has been a breaking point with the, uh, criticality of having so many people working remote. So using a CDN is practical, but you've got to bolt on the fairly advanced, uh, security apparatus. Apparatus isn't necessarily a technical term, but I think it describes it. There's a lot of um, like, in, you know, installing a DRM solution, which we provide in Wazza Streaming Cloud now, um, or uh, you know, perhaps you need to do a token authentication where your website literally needs to talk to Wazza and make sure that that one player is the only player authorized to play that URL. So those things are, are kind of challenging to set up, but when you have it set up, a high security company can use a CDN confidently. Great. Well, hey, Tim, thank you for talking to me about all of this. I know it's a lot of information out there. And at the end of the day, I think I, I absolutely hear you. You know, a, a content delivery network is a great solution. It's the easiest solution. Um, uh, but certainly having the option to build your own. And that being said, there are many CDNs that actually use us in that whole process oh, yeah. to do exactly what we're talking about in terms of building their own but yeah uh, 
Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think it's important to recognize that Wowza is a very, very solid platform when, when it comes to sourcing into a CDN. A CDN is not really that streaming expert. They're not streaming experts. They're experts at caching and global distribution. And we come in with the expertise on streaming and security and we really drive it home. So I think anybody, if you're scaling for a webcam with five users at a time, or if you're scaling for 500,000 people, our expertise in tuning and optimizing video going into a CDN using our software or our services is, is, a, is a very, very strong move when someone's moving towards building their own streaming infrastructure. So that was kind of a salesy way to wrap this no up. No problem. In I think fact, you see where for... I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah, well, also for anybody who wants, we also have a PDF file that is a report on um, streaming with uh, uh, streaming with Wowza. Please do check it out. I'll put it in the description. Other than that, everyone, happy streaming. <laughs>